In this video, we're going to look at the events that occur in the first half of meiosis, which is what we call meiosis 1. Now, as we go through the details, it's important to consider what the ultimate goal of meiosis is, which is, of course, to produce functional gametes, which, if you are biologically male, would be your sperm, and if you are biologically female, would be your eggs. Now, gametes as reproductive cells have specific characteristics that makes them distinct from other adult human cells in the human body. The first, of course, being that gametes are haploid, meaning that instead of containing both maternal and paternal chromosomes, they only have one of the two. Which one they have depends on how the gamete is produced, as we are going to see. Like adult human cells as well, each gamete is only going to contain one copy of each of the 23 times 1 chromosomes, meaning that because our DNA was duplicated in S phase before meiosis, we would have two copies of every chromosome, and the goal of a successful gamete production is to create a situation where each sperm and egg only has one copy of 23 times 1 chromosomes. The other characteristic of gametes is that each sperm and each egg cell is genetically unique. So one of the other things that meiosis needs to do is increase the genetic diversity that exists between gametes, which makes it completely different than mitosis, because remember in mitosis, our goal is to create genetically identical cells so that one cell functions as a replacement of the cell that it was copied from. So if we just jump into meiosis and go to the first phase, which is what we call prophase 1, we can kind of see this as a combination of both prophase and prometaphase from mitosis, and we can see some superficial similarities. Firstly, we can see that the chromosomes are condensed into their characteristic X shapes, which makes them easier to transport to opposite sides of the cell. Secondly, obviously chromosomes don't move by themselves, so we can see that the centrosomes have become active and are beginning to produce the microtubule spindle fibers that are necessary to pull the chromosomes to opposite sides of the cell. But obviously, if the nuclear membrane were still in the way, uh, this would not be possible, and therefore, in the equivalent of prometa phase, half of prophase 1, we can see that the nuclear membrane is beginning to disintegrate. However, if we look at the way the chromosomes are arranged during prometaphase, or the equivalent of prometaphase in prophase 1, we can see that there is an event happening here that does not occur in mitosis. So let's talk about what exactly is happening by looking at a pair of chromosomes that are what we call a homologous pair of chromosomes. So what exactly does this mean? Well, homologous chromosomes are the same chromosome. So let's say, for the sake of simplicity, that this is chromosome number one, and this is also chromosome number one. The only difference is that the one in blue, we are going to say, is your paternal chromosome, while the one in red is your maternal chromosome. So again, same chromosome, they just come from different parents. And we can use homologous as an adjective to describe this situation, and the noun form of this, two chromosomes that are the same chromosome that come from opposite parents are what we call homologs of each other. So this is the paternal homolog, and this is the maternal homolog. And if we look here at this enlarged version, we can see that this is what's happening here. So we can see that the homologs of each chromosome are pairing together uh, and in a phenomenon which is what we call synapsis. And an easy way to remember what synapsis is, remember that any time that you have an English word that has the prefix syn, this means with or together. So the two homologs are pairing together and they attach to each other at locations which are what we call a 
chiasma. Uh, so chiasma is the singular form of this, uh, but we can see that these chromosomes are actually pairing together at multiple chiasma, and if we have more than one pairing location, these are what we call chiasmata. This is the plural form here. Uh, so what exactly is the purpose of synapsis? Well, the purpose, as we can see here, is an exchange of DNA. And remember that one of the goals of meiosis is to create genetically unique sperm or eggs, and this is one way to do it. So the result of synapsis and this exchange of DNA is what we call hybrid chromosomes. So we can see that even though this chromosome is mostly blue, so mostly paternal, it also has a small section of maternal DNA here that was a result of this exchange of DNA here. And we can see even though this chromosome is still mostly maternal, we can see at the bottom here, there is a small segment of paternal DNA here. This process is known by the rather cumbersome name of homologous recombination. Again, meaning that two chromosomes that are the same as each other, just a paternal version and a maternal version, recombined their DNA with each other, or if you prefer not to use the rather cumbersome homologous recombination, most geneticists simply refer to this process as crossing over, where the two pieces of DNA actually literally cross over with each other and swap pieces at the chiasma locations. And the result of this is by the end of prophase one, if crossing over has occurred in every homologous pair of chromosomes, we would end up with 23 times two genetically unique chromosomes which makes us ready for metaphase one. Now we can see that metaphase one looks very similar to metaphase in mitosis, but we can see when the chromosomes align in the central axis of the cell, which again is what we call the metaphase plate, we can see that the alignment is different uh, at the metaphase plate. Sorry, I wrote metaphase plate down in the wrong location, uh, because what is meant to describe this, remember that in mitosis, your chromosomes would align in a single file line, but here we see the chromosomes aligning in double file, and this is critical in order to produce haploid chroma or haploid gametes. Uh, because what we see here is that homologous pairs are aligning in double file. So this would be chromosome 1, and this would be chromosome 1 as well. This would be chromosome 2, and this would be the other homolog of chromosome 2. Two. So this process of where the chromosomes are aligning on the metaphase plate like this is what we call the process of independent assortment. And we'll talk about what the significance of this is here. Now remember that the blue chromosome is the paternal homolog, whereas the red chromosome is the maternal homolog. So here we can see that the paternal homolog has aligned on the left side or assorted on the left-hand side of the metaphase plate, and therefore the paternal homolog is going to be pulled towards the left side, which would make one daughter cell, whereas the maternal homolog would be pulled to the opposite side. Now, the interesting thing about this process here is that there is no guarantee that the paternal or maternal homologs need to position themselves in this, in this particular way. It is just as likely that the maternal chromosome would be on the left-hand side and the paternal chromosome on the right-hand side. This is just the way that random chance allowed it to happen. So depending on which way the paternal and maternal homologs or homologous chromosomes assort themselves along the metaphase plate, this is going to result 
in different gametes being produced because this gamete here would contain only the paternal chromosome and this gamete produced here would contain only the maternal chromosome. And we could actually mathematically calculate the number of possible gametes that we would get depending on how independent assortment occurs. In, in every case, there are two possibilities for each chromosome to align. Each homologue can either be on the left or the right. That's two different possibilities. And there are 23 different possible or different chromosome pairs that undergo independent assortment. So the number of different possibilities of gametes that we can produce is two times two times two times two. 23 different times that is the greatest or the um total number of possibilities that we can get just from this process of independent assortment here so you can see how this is critical for producing genetically unique sperm and eggs now as we finish up here the good news is that Anaphase 1 and telophase 1 basically function identically to mitosis. So in anaphase 1, we can see that the microtubules are getting shorter because they are depolymerizing, meaning that they're literally taking themselves apart. And as they make themselves shorter, they pull the homologue or the uh, opposite homologs. Uh, again, we can say that this is the paternal chromosome and this is the maternal chromosome we can see that these hom homologous chromosomes are being pulled away from each other to the opposite sides of the cell where they are eventually going to make different daughter cells and then in telophase one we can see that the metaphase plate is beginning to contract at the central axis of the cell and this of course is going to ultimately split the cytoplasm in two for those that remember the term this is the process of cytokinesis occurring and once the chromosomes have been pulled to opposite sides of the cell we see that the nuclear membrane is ultimately going to reform once again in order to protect the chromosomes that have been pulled to opposite sides however one key distinction is that the chromosomes are actually not going to decondense because even though we've made it to the end of telophase this is only telophase one the first half of meiosis we have to go through this process entirely again why well as we can see we have 23 times 1 because again we're only pulling the maternal or paternal chromosomes to opposite sides of the cell we have 23 times 1 chromosomes being pulled this way but we also have 23 times 1 chromosomes being pulled this way which means as a result of independent assortment we have created haploid daughter cells the problem is that the chromosomes as we can see here still have their characteristic x shape that's because there are two copies of each chromosome that are being pulled to opposite daughter cells and as we'll see in the next video the purpose of meiosis 2 is to make sure that we still retain haploid gametes but where the copy number of each chromosome is decreased from two copies of each chromosome to one copy of each chromosome which is going to be the focus of the second video in this series where we look at the stages of meiosis